Thanks for watching today's video. Today we're going to discuss how to make a live CD. This is a question I've received numerous times from our YouTube channel, from Twitter, from our website. Uh, what is a live CD? How do you make one? I know that's a very basic question, so if you're more experienced with Linux, you may want to move on to another video. Uh, but for those who are new to Linux, who would like a place to jump on board and to get in, uh, do follow through. We will go from creating a live CD right up through actually booting the live CD to verify that it works. To do so, we're going to use a program called ImageBurn. ImageBurn is a freeware program. Anybody can download it and use it. It's free to access. It uh, uses very little resources from the computer. So it's lightweight and it's very handy. You can do more than just burn ISO image files. Uh, you can actually create ISOs, you can burn ISOs, you can make a new disk compilation of files. I mean, it's very versatile. There's a handful of things you can do with it. So, like I said, it is freeware. To access ImageBurn, if you want to download that and use it, simply go to your web browser and go to imageburn.com. Now that's imgburn.com. Reason for the name is you burn ISO image files. is one of the main purposes of the program. So simply take the download link across the, the top navigation bar and select a mirror link to download from. And then click the, the green download icon. And once it's done downloading, it is a small download. Uh, so once it's done, simply launch the installer. I already have ImageBurn installed, so I'll be able to partially step through the, the installation process. But it works really easy if you just go ahead and take all the defaults through the installation wizard. So accept the user agreement. I'll leave that as default. You can customize the install. I'll just click Next. I'll leave it in its default install directory. And we'll click on Through. Now you may have had further screens in that wizard. Uh, like I said, I already have ImageBurn installed and running in the background, so I could not continue through that. Take the defaults, launch ImageBurn. And then the first option we're going to take is write image file to disk. But before we can do so, we have to have an image file. So where do you get an image file for your live CD? You can go to any distribution's website. A place I like to go is distrowatch.com. They have a great index of Linux operating systems there. And every one of the operating systems they have listed all has links to the ISO file that you can download to create the live CD. So in our situation, let's say you want to take Ubuntu, since that is one of the more popular versions of Linux. We can take Ubuntu and we can download that live ISO file. Now I've taken the Ubuntu 11.10 option here, mostly because it's the last official release of Ubuntu that we've had. You'll notice that on DistroWatch's site, you'll see a link to both the 32-bit and the 64-bit ISO files. If you're running a machine that can handle the 64-bit version, you may be better off doing so. Um, in my case, I'm going to be using a VirtualBox setup, so I'll just download the 32-bit version uh, from their site. Now do keep in mind that most of these ISO file downloads are you know five, six, seven hundred meg or larger, uh, depending on your on your OS that you're downloading. Your other choice to access the ISO file is you can go to that distribution's website, whether it be Ubuntu or some of the other Linux distributions. All their ISO files should be hosted on their site or have mirror links to those. So you'll notice here on Ubuntu site we have the same option to download the exact same ISO files. So I've already downloaded those files in this example, uh, since they will take a while. Once you have those ISO files downloaded, simply launch ImageBurn. And once it pops up, you'll notice that ImageBurn is actually comprised of two windows. Uh, the bottom window is your log window. This is a running log of everything that ImageBurn is doing. This gives you some pretty comprehensive information about the program while it's running. So if you have questions about what's happening, it's, that's a good place to start. If you have an issue where ImageBurn is failing for whatever reason, it will report it in the log as well. We'll primarily be using the first option in the upper left hand corner, and that's write image file to disk. You can create an image from a disk, say if you created an Ubuntu disk and accidentally deleted the ISO file, and you needed to rip an ISO back to your hard drive, you could do that using that option. There's some other choices here you can take as well. You'll notice if you click the menu across the top of the window, we have a bunch of settings you can get in and see. Um, you can also do pretty much the same exact functions as clicking on the icons, so there's not a whole lot there to look at, and you can change how ImageBurn reports some information to you. We'll take the top option to write an image to a disk, and then we're going to search for the ISO file. Now this is where you stored that ISO image on your hard drive. So I'll select the version that I want to install. I'm going to take the 32-bit. 
And then once you select the 32-bit version that you want to install or whether you want to go 64, simply click on Open. Now do keep in mind when we say image file, we're not referencing a picture. This is actually a snapshot of the disk or of the live boot medium that we're using. So you can see there's some options there uh, that allow you to choose. If you have more than one burner, you can select that drive there. The window on the right hand side of this screen will allow you to see some more information about your drive, about the hardware itself. Below that you can change the write speed. Um, usually I just leave that set at max so it'll run as, as fast as the drive will burn. If you're burning more than one copy you can change that there. I'll just leave it as a default and select the next button at the bottom. And there we go. Now we have the disk burning. You'll notice that the buffer fills up pretty quick and in here in just a few moments we'll have a live CD. Now you'll notice the log is in fact running. We can see that it's got marked in there that it's writing the lead in and it's reading some tracks and things of that nature. Up at the top we can see we can actually disable the log if we want it to. Uh, you get a little message here saying, oh no, you may not want to do that because you get some good information from the log. So pretty much right now it's just to set back and wait as we wait for image burn to do its job. Uh, you will notice that there are some other options on this screen. Most of the screen is pretty much just for reporting purposes. But up in the right hand corner we have some options and some settings that we can toggle on and off. And we'll discuss more on those settings here in just a moment uh, because they're more towards the end of the burning process. So since this will take just a few moments I'll go ahead and fast forward through this and we'll get back to the next point that we can interact with image burn again. Okay, so we're almost done with the burn process. You'll notice these options that I mentioned just a moment ago. Up here we have several that we can take. Uh, they're all disabled except for verify. Um, you can eject the tray, you can verify, you can shut the machine down once it's done downloading. You can close the program. Usually the only option I leave toggled is verify. What that means is once the disk is done burning, essentially the tray will open and then close and image burn will go back through and read the disk and compare that with the ISO file to make sure that you have a good copy uh, so it takes a little longer but I like to do that as well usually I leave eject tray disabled because once I'm done burning it and once it's verified um, you'll hear some music play uh, signifying that the process is done and then I'll just leave the disk in there so I can reboot the computer and test the disk so now you can notice down at the bottom that we're waiting for the drive to go ready again. Uh, you can't see it, but on my end the drive actually just opened and closed again. And uh, now we're verifying the disk. So you're going to notice when the verified disk process starts, the image buffer fills up. And our uh, little completion bar up there will start counting up. And essentially what this will do, it will take a few, just a couple moments. It will go back through, it will reread that disk, and it will compare it with the image file and make sure that it's got good continuity between the two make sure that it's a good copy. Now sometimes the verification process is not a dead set way to make sure you have a hundred percent legitimate copy of your ISO file but it is just a little extra you know it is a little extra reinforcement in the concept that maybe you didn't just burn a coaster so we'll go ahead and fast forward through this and uh, show you what it looks like when it's done. So now it's almost done once it's complete you'll notice that the image buffer backs down and empties itself a little box will pop up and you'll actually hear some little Hawaiian tropical sound of music play in the background uh, signifying that the process is complete so you can click OK then unless you're going to burn another disk we can just go ahead and exit image burn and close that out now that we've successfully created the disk we need to test it to make sure that it works so I'm going to use VirtualBox I need to go through and make sure that my virtual machine can see the disk that is in my host drive so I'm simply going to take the settings option I can come through. I can toggle pass through on if I want to. I'll just leave it off for this situation. Make sure my drive is still set to ID primary. Take the options button next to it. And since the CD is in my host drive D, I'll leave it there and click start. Now to get into the quick boot menu, press F12. And in my situation, I'll take the option C to boot from the CD-ROM. Um, my That drive is actually a DVD drive. But VirtualBox sees it as a as a virtual CD. You can see it's now booting. Now do take a note if you're using this on your main computer, if you've got a laptop in your lap you're trying it with, uh, you boot it up. I believe if you press F8. As some machines it may be an option such as F10 or F12, depending on your BIOS, that will allow you to go to a quick boot menu and uh, to select that 
optical drive to boot from. Otherwise, you can go into your BIOS and set it to always boot from the optical drive first. Uh, that should be in your computer's or your motherboard's uh, documentation. So as you can see, we're now booting Ubuntu 11.10. So that's as simple as it is. We've now created a live CD. Essentially what you've done is, is downloaded a snapshot of a working live CD. You've burned it to a, a CDR or a DVDR, depending on what you've downloaded. And you're now able to boot it. So congratulations, you've created your first live CD. If you haven't continued with our other videos yet, do make sure that you go through those to see how to install from the live CD, how to utilize the live CD, and we have more videos coming in the future, on how to use the live CD for more than just installing Linux, uh, for how to migrate files to and from a bad hard drive or uh, from a bad Windows install. Uh, so all that's very handy to use. So make sure you swing by our website at techiesmarts.com. Be sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find the links for our website, our YouTube channel, and our Twitter feed all in the description of the video. So once again, thanks for watching and have a great day.